Hello and welcome to A Note for God. Thank you so much. As of today, I have reached 100 subscribers, which makes me so happy. And if you have subscribed, thank you so much. I truly appreciate you. And if you haven't done so, go ahead and subscribe, comment below, and definitely hit like for this video. All right, today is Proverbs 29. Let's get started. Whoever stubbornly refuses to accept criticism will suddenly be destroyed beyond recovery. When the godly are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in power, they groan. The man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father. But if he hangs around with prostitutes, his wealth is wasted. A just king gives stability to its nation, but one who demands bribes destroys it. To flatter friends is to lay a trap for their feet. Evil people are trapped by sin, but the righteous escape shouting for joy. The godly care about the rights of the poor. The wicked don't care at all. Mockers can get a whole town agitated, but the wise will calm anger. If a wise person takes a fool to court, they will be ranting in ridicule, but no satisfaction. The bloodthirsty hate blameless people, but the upright seek to help them. Fools vent their anger, but the wise quickly, quietly hold it back. If a ruler pays attention to liars, all his advisors will be wicked. The poor and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives sight to the eyes of both. If a king judges the poor fairly, his throne will last forever. To discipline a child produces wisdom, but a mother is disgraced by an undisciplined child. When the wicked are in authority, sin flourishes, but the godly will live to see their downfall. Discipline your children, and they will give you peace of mind and will make your heart glad. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. Words alone will not discipline a servant. The words may be understood, but they're not heeded. There is more hope for a fool than for someone who speaks without thinking. A servant pampered from childhood will be will become a rebel. An angry person starts fights. A hot-tempered person commits all kinds of sin. Pride ends in humiliation when while humility brings honor. If you assist a thief, you only hurt yourself. You are sworn to tell the truth, but you dare not testify. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice comes from the Lord. The righteous despise the unjust. The wicked despise the godly. All right, again, there's a lot of repetitions in all the Proverbs. So if you have not listened to all of them, I definitely will suggest, suggest look at me, to go back and listen, right? So... We're coming up towards the end. So you can definitely restart it in February, right? Do Proverbs 1 in February and re-listen. And just have it play in the black background. And you as well go back and listen and find the themes, right? Again, I've said this to you. There's themes. There's repetition. Because with repetition, basically that's how we learn, right? I can't tell you one thing and then you're going to remember, right? Even as a teacher, it's repeat, repeat, repeat. Because that's just how our brains are, right? We have to repeat until we get it. And that's exactly what we see in the Proverbs, right? There's a lot of repetition, right? So hopefully it goes in our head. So we're like, oh, either we should be doing this or not be doing this. So definitely take a listen again and see what is being repeated. What is the theme, right? And let's go to the beginning. Whoever... Uh, whoever stubbornly refuses to accept criticism will suddenly be destroyed by beyond recovery. A lot of people are very stubborn. They don't want to change your way. It's my way. And they don't really want to listen. Even when somebody is trying to correct them in a loving manner or basically saying like, you're really wrong, you know, um, listen to why. And again, it's not always about pointing to other people. Are we ourselves exhibiting these things that Proverbs is, is saying not to do, right? The man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father. I love that. But then he says, but if he hangs around with prostitutes, his wealth is wasted. 
let's be honest, prostitutes aren't free, especially when he's running this. I mean, you have to pay for their service, right? So your money isn't going anywhere. Well, it's going to their pockets and out of your pocket, right? The godly care about the rights of the poor and the wicked don't care at all. We see this again as repetition as one of these themes. Taking care of the poor. Um, I don't know if you thought, I think I said it, I might have said it once or twice. Have you thought about donating to a specific organization that helps the poor, um, the women, the children, the elderly? I mean, maybe that's something you want to look at, right? As you are hearing these themes, right? So because if the Bible is saying then maybe we should start looking into what organization can I give my money to that I know is going to to the people, right? There's a lot of organizations out here, let's be honest, that like 10% of the money goes to the people and 90% goes to like the board members and the founders, right? Like find an organization, you know, maybe around even your town that all their money, it's going to, you know, either help the children, the women or the elderly. Um, fools vent their anger, but the wise quietly holds it back. Are we being a fool by just lashing out or are we being wise and not lashing out, keeping it to yourself and taking it up to God, right? To discipline a child produces wisdom. We see this theme again. I know sometimes we don't want to hear it, but we as parents really have to discipline our children. I know we're tired. I know sometimes you're like, you know what? Just do whatever you want to do. And when we have that attitude, then our kids learn that there's no consequences, right? As long as you're consistent and as long as you have those boundaries and as long as they know that you're going to follow through, kids will not push as hard, right? So definitely... We need to, you know, put set those boundaries for our children. Again, discipline your children and they will give you peace of mind and they will make your heart glad because once you discipline your children, you kind of, you do have that peace of mind. You know how, you know that you've disciplined your children. You know that they know how to act, how to behave, how to present themselves so you're not worried as how are they going to act if I take him here or there? And I think that's a, a lot of times why people get really stressed. Like, oh my God, what if they start jumping in couches? Or what if my kids do this and this and that? But again, it goes back to discipline, um, discipline your children, right? And I love this one. There is more hope for a fool. And you really have to understand this part. How much Proverbs has talked about not being a fool. And here it says, there is more hope for a fool than for someone who speaks without thinking. My goodness, right? Are we thinking or are we not thinking, right? Pride ends in humiliation. Sometimes we're very prideful and we want to stick to our guns, but we really have to bring that to God, right? Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. You know, I see this so much with with people like we fear certain people or, or I fear my boss or coworkers, you know, it's like, no, we really shouldn't fear, fear other people. Let's be honest. We really shouldn't. And, um, you know, look what the proverb says, but trusting the Lord means safety. Once you're focused on that negativity, let's say on fear, you're not focused on trusting God and knowing that God will always be there for you and um, will always protect you, right? So if you're thinking about that, come back to this Proverbs, all right? So again, definitely look up words that you don't know. Read those commentaries. I'm telling you those commentaries, once you start reading, you just like learn so much and they break it line by line, which I love. Look at the th themes. What other things? What theme do we find in this specific proverb that we've seen in the other ones? Again, I feel like everything kind of intertwines and and talks about the other one, right? Talking about if 
if there's a good government, people are glad. If there is an evil, wicked people basically go into hiding, which we've seen that in the last couple of Proverbs. So he brings in one theme and then he carries it out in a few more in a few proverbs if you've noticed that right and you notice that when you start reading them when you start listening to them because that's what i'm doing <laughs> right uh today's business of the day is podia my favorite if you have thought for 2022 to offer online courses memberships downloads uh ebooks, planners, whatever you thought, Padilla is my favorite. It collects your emails. Let's talk about that right now. It collects your email, which is very important if you are creating a business online, if you want to make some extra money, especially with how times are. Padilla is your friend. The link will be down below. If you have any questions, definitely comment below and let me know and I'll get back to you. But is this it is the simplest program ever. I have used Kajabi. And for me, Kajabi was just too complicated. I even hired a VA and she's like, it's a little complicated. You have to know certain things. And I'm like, no, I like to do most of my work, actually hundred percent of my work for right now. And it really has to be easy for me to do it. Right. I don't mind spending a few hours learning it. But if it goes beyond where it's like you have to go to this page and then that page and then it's no, right? So Padilla is your friend. So definitely, like I said, if, if you're ready to start an online business to offer the offer online courses or start membership, membership site or free ebooks or purchases, this is the platform for you. Again, it is super, super easy. It really is. All right. So any questions, comment below. There is an affiliate link in the bottom for you to click on. Don't forget, starting February, the first Wednesday in February, Sisters on, no, not this one. I apologize. Starting February, we're going to do Sisters on the Rise, a community for women that desire a closer relationship to God. It is basically everything you wanted, wanted to know once you got saved. So definitely look for that. I was jumping the gun here. This is what's starting on the first week of February. I'm divorced now. What? Advice from a Christian perspective. I cannot wait for this four-part mini-series every single Wednesday for the month of February. So definitely, if you haven't done so, and if you've come to the end of watching this video, definitely subscribe and comment below. I cannot wait because it is going to be good, right? This is really talking about... um oneself, you know, if you are divorced, um, talking about really the healing process, right? We're not talking about what happened, whose fault was it, um, let's say our stories, which is great and sometimes, but this is really about the healing part. And as a Christian, that your standards now are a little bit different, right? So definitely check that out. Again, thank you so much for watching. And thank you for all of you who have subscribed, who got me to 100, which I'm super glad. So if you haven't done so, definitely subscribe. And I will watch, hear you, watch you, see you in Proverbs 30. Have a great day.